Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying and the napkin which had been on his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. These words taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, describe the experience, the first experience of the closest friends of Jesus Christ their first experience of his resurrection. In the sequence that the deacon proclaimed for us in Latin, the, uh, the question was asked of Mary. Tell us, Maria, what did you see along the way? And she answers, the tomb of the living Lord. These disciples saw and believed. What did they see? An empty tomb. You see an empty tomb and you believe, believe what? There are some peculiarities of the Gospel of John, which you know is different, the Gospel is different from the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. This gospel tells us about Mary going very early on the first day of the week to the tomb. The account of the death and burial of Jesus in John's gospel, chapter 19, ends by telling us that when Jesus was laid in the tomb, they also placed some jars of oil used for anointing of the dead, of a dead body. They placed alabaster jars of oil, jars of alabaster oil, in the, along with the clothes inside the tomb, and a stone was rolled over, and they left. Some say that according to John's gospel, therefore, the body of Jesus was anointed and prepared for burial. Then my question is, if the body had been anointed and prepared for burial, what did Mary go back to the tomb to do on a Sunday morning, the first day of the week? St. Matthew tells us in his own account of the burial that while the disciple, the friends of Jesus buried him, Mary and the other women sat there and were watching the tomb. But then the chief priests went to Pilate and asked him to provide guards for the tomb 
Because this man has disciples and he had claimed he would rise again. So he sent guards to the tomb and Mary and the women left. And after having observed the Sabbath, they came back early in the morning with oil to anoint the body. Math Mark says the same thing. And Luke is more explicit. St. Luke tells us that when they buried Jesus, it was on the evening of Friday. And the Sabbath, the holiest Sabbath in the year for the Israelites, because it was Passover, was drawing near. They buried him hurriedly, and the women prepared some ointment and kept the ointment and observed the Sabbath. There was no time to do the full burial rites of Jesus according to the Jewish custom because they couldn't do that on a Sabbath day. So they went home to observe the Sabbath. Then the first day of the week Luke tells us, chapter 24, verse 1, the women came back with those oils they had prepared to anoint the body. Mary Chojerigun Nili Nagbako Toto on the third day. She went to look for the dead body of Jesus to prepare her, him for burial properly. Otito Dirigeso. She was looking for a dead body, corpse. When she came to the tomb, she saw that the stone had been ro rolled away. And remember, it was still dark. As I explained yesterday at night, the Jews had, it was in the morning of a normal working day because their day of rest was Sabbath. This first day of the week, the women came very early before others woke up. For the rest of the Jews, for the rest of the population in Jerusalem, it was a normal day. But for the whole world, something new, irrepeatable, had happened. Mary only saw that the stone had been rolled away and ran back to the apostles. Fear. Matthew, Mark, Luke tell us about angels or people dressed in dazzling clothes talking to the women, telling them Jesus was no longer there because he had risen and they should not be looking for the living among the dead. But according to John, Mary saw nothing except that the stone had been rolled away. She didn't look in and ran to Peter and to John. Two characters in the gospel one representing leadership and direction, the other representing love, unfailing love. These two things must go together. No matter how much love we have, we still need some people to give us direction. And no matter how charismatic in your leadership you are, without love you achieve nothing. And two of them ran. Also, do not a lot of running to be done. Mary ran, Peter ran, John ran. Are you running? Are you running? Yes, Saturday morning. We need to jogging. Can she get strong?
but these people were running for some other reason. Something new had happened. John overtook Peter, came and peeped, and saw the linen cloths. He couldn't enter. Peter came and entered and saw everything laid in place. Now, confusion. If anybody had stolen the body of Jesus, as Mary would eventually say, they have taken my Lord away and I do not know where they have kept him. Who would take the body away and leave the clothes there? Without scattering them, folded neatly and kept on the side. But in her mind, she was looking for a dead body. She wasn't looking for a living person. So they saw the tomb and the clothes and believed. Believed what? The gospel ends by telling us that they believed. Till then, they had not believed that the Lord would rise again. Uh, up to this point, they hadn't seen Jesus. All that they saw was an empty tomb. And the action of Mary demonstrates to us the devastation, the disillusionment, the disappointment she experienced when she saw that empty tomb. We know how the story ended. Mary, when the apostles went back, Mary remained in the tomb, weeping. Last night I was telling the people of God, move away from the tomb. Get out from the land of the dead, the land of hatred, violence, and sin so that you will encounter the living Lord of light and life. You must move away from the empty tomb, go beyond the empty, empty tomb, to see the new life that has emerged from the tomb. Because that empty tomb marks the end of a certain way of life and behaving of a certain way of relationship with God, of a certain way of relationship with our brothers and sisters, that empty tomb is a sign and a proof of the beginning of a new life. It may interest you to know that according to the tradition of Christianity, those linen cloths used in wrapping the body of Jesus, they are still there. In Italy, in the cathedral of Turin, the cathedral of the Holy Shroud. If you are privileged to travel to Italy, if you are a football fan, you may want to go and watch the match of Juventus in Torino. But after the match, try and visit the Basilica, the Cathedral of the Holy Shroud. I have been there a number of times. Science has examined that shroud many times. People have all sorts of theories about that shroud. 
but one thing remained because that shroud has stains of blood and the image of a body including a face on it but what science could not explain and can't explain is how come that human blood was left on that cloth for so long and it is still noticeable can be proved by science that it is human blood of a man male who died violently between the ages of 30 and 34 the signs are still there those cloths that the apostles saw and believed are still there but then will the empty tomb or even the cloth prove anything for you no it is only your experience of the living lord because he is alive peter told cornelius we are witnesses that this man is still alive whether they kill us or torment us we can't deny what we know my brothers and sisters i have experienced him in my own life no amount of preaching bible pilgrimages novenas will make you believe in the living lord it is only your personal experience of him one of my brothers nobody you book for me one day some father god i have seen jesus today i'm sad yeah in my some nang my out and see how when and where or some no no chichi i'm saying that my magic my new badge i said no in the middle of nowhere. And uh, there are one man came around walking and asked him what the problem was. See you, Maga. One or two things. See, I start the engine. The engine started and he closed it and the man walked away. Now, I said, I'm going to go to Jesus. I'm going to go to Jesus. I'm going to go There are experiences you have in life. It may be a word that your father, your mother, your husband, your priest, your wife, your child tells you. And immediately Christ comes alive in your, in your, in your life. It is only this type of experience that will make you believe that the Lord is alive. And once you have experienced it, Whatever happens in the world, you will always continue to bear witness. He is alive. I have seen him. Seeing this time is not just with the eyes. Mary, out of love, remained in the tomb and kept weeping. What happened at the end? Did Mary find Jesus? Mary omechir huma Jesu, ochotar Jesu? No. Mary searched, wept, but she did not find Jesus. It was Jesus who found her. Before the resurrection, Jesus could be found by those who were looking for him. After feeding the 5,000, 
in John chapter 6, he went to the other side of the lake. People went there and found him. As a child, he disappeared during the pilgrimage. His parents went back to Jerusalem, to the temple, and found him. In the garden where he was praying with the apostles, Judas and the soldiers came and found him. But after the resurrection, he finds you. Omar's Jeribas, he came where they were fishing. The apostles were gathered in the house. If you continue to read this John chapter 20, he came and said, peace be with you. Thomas was not there. On the eighth day, he came again. He finds us. But we have to allow him to find us by continuing to love him and continuing to search like Mary. And he will find you. But beyond that, just like that empty tomb, which Mary thought was a, a sign of complete failure and loss, was indeed the sign of a new beginning. So also many of the things in your life that are negative are really signs or marks, starting points of new life. Who among us hasn't suffered disappointment in life? Unfortunately, Judas killed himself. If he hadn't, even his failure and betrayal would have been transformed into the beginning of new life. Check your marriage now and how happy you are. Think maybe of the relationship you had before that you thought would end in marriage and it broke and your heart was broken. But that was the beginning of new life. Some parents, their children fail them. You want your child to study in the university and to study a particular course. You want your child to be a lawyer. You want your child to be a medical doctor. He or she, with all the brilliant results he or she may have, leaves the university and becomes a footballer becomes an actor or begins to study business admin. And your heart is broken. That change of course, of course, may be the beginning of new life. Look beyond the tomb that is empty and see the life that is beginning. You know, when we think of the modern countries and nations in Europe, we often forget when we see the progress and development in Britain, Italy, Germany, France, even Russia, Poland, Holland, Ireland, beautiful countries, stable and well developed. We often forget that these new nations, modern nations, emerged from a painful, difficult, long process of decay of the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire took over 200 years to collapse and it was terrible. Even St. Augustine thought towards the end of his life that the world was coming to an end. 
but new life was emerging from the empty tomb. The same may be happening to our country, Nigeria. This country is decaying, is breaking up, is disintegrating. Laws are not observed, violence has taken over, selfishness and greed. Probably a new nation is being born, or even new nations or new ways of being a nation. The empty tomb, with all its pain and disappointment, may be the beginning of new life. Think of the egg. Ekwa, ekwa okoko. If you are a child and you see a hen lying on top of the eggs, every morning that the hen leaves, you go and admire the eggs. And ekwa okoko kuri na ekwa. Ehuburi ge hen na den hen na den moro emereme. One day. The child comes and suddenly finds that all the eggs are broken. But from the shells of those broken eggs, you have new life, new chickens. And that egg must break. The only thing is that the force that breaks the egg is from inside. That is why it is important that for our nation to really develop into a new reality, the force that leads to that development must be from inside. The external aggression being caused by terrorists and bandits and the reaction of those who are offended, that will not lead to the new life. It must be new positive energy that rolls away the tomb, the stone covering the tomb for the new life to emerge. There is a symbol the Italians use for Easter. And it is especially important for children. The Easter egg. Egg, egg what? The egg is a sign of Easter, a symbol of Easter in Italy and other countries in Europe. Why? Because of the life that emerges from the egg. But the life to emerge, the egg has to be broken. So parents, parents buy gifts for their children and hide those gifts in an egg of chocolate. It was a small toy. It was a chocolate cover like an egg. You give it to a child. If the child keeps the chocolate unbroken, he or she will not take the gift and will not eat the chocolate. But for him to receive the new gift, he has to break that chocolate in a careful way and remove the gift. As I said yesterday, let us move away from the tomb of darkness to embrace new life. Today, I will also emphasize that the empty tomb in our lives as individuals, as families, as nation, may be the beginning of new life. But we have to do some running. We have to be in a haste to experience the new life and to share the news. And we have to run together. I think this is the most difficult aspect of life for us in this country. The young and the old, John and Peter, are not running together. And there is a terrible problem. Because 
the old people don't understand the desperation and anger of the young people. And the young people don't understand the experience of the old and the reason for their caution. And sometimes it is because the old are selfish and greedy and the young are impatient and ambitious. Otito Dirigeso, we must run together. We often say, Maraya, those of us who knew the war, we often say these young people who want another war, they don't know what war is. If they knew what war is, they should not be want calling for war. And I tell you, we are already leaving that war. Because we ask you, what does the war mean? And you tell him, during the war, we were not going to school. We had no food. We couldn't move freely. And everything has, there was even no money and no jobs. And the young person will tell you, eh, today, am I going to go to Jerry School and Maragon? Is there a job for me? Am I moving freely? Is there any economy that is guaranteeing my future? This is a state of war. If you want the young people to understand the dangers of another war, you first have to understand the precariousness and difficulty of where they are living now. But many of us who are older are too comfortable and too selfish. Can you imagine a person who fought the Nigeria Biafra war still in government today and wanting to rule again? And they go more chokogun in the government again. Then the guy who magu zoge je kote megi je ane gbeka chori chi Nigeria obera kovoganan. What is wrong? And you are not able to stop foreigners from overrunning our country. You are not able to provide safe passage for our people in their farms and to their markets. And you want to remain in government. And you tell the young people that they should not fight war when there is already war. Uh, but you, young person, uh, take it easy. Take it easy. Because the one you think is war now is not even introduction to war when it begins. The horror of armed conflict is such that at the end nobody gains except those who sell arms. And I'm always pleading with all those who want to regain the freedom of Nigerians and even of some sections of the Nigerian society. Yes, you are free to be a freedom fighter. But be careful. There is a danger when freedom fighters take up arms. When freedom fighters take up arms, they risk either being killed in the fight, or if they are not killed, they become brutal dictators after the so-called freedom has been acquired. And the condition of the people they fought for will become worse than their condition before the so-called liberation. That was the difference between Nelson Mandela of South Africa and Robert Mugabe of Zimbabwe. When a freedom fighter obtains freedom for his people without the force of arms, 
then yes negotiation pressure all sorts of lobbying national and international because what we now call democracy is only the art of negotiation of power we have to be able to negotiate power because if we fight for power we will continue to fight to keep it that's the danger that is why those who have seen war are telling you take it easy but we have to go together the older people must provide the vision needed for new society and the younger people have to provide the energy by the listening ear so long as greed and selfishness and ambition are the primary va values we will remain in the region of the tomb and burial on this day of easter therefore my dear brothers and sisters let all of us christians rejoice at the gift of new life in baptism and that gift of new life in baptism makes it possible for us to bear witness to others that jesus is still alive and active in us he is still going about doing good in you and in me and through you and through me he will continue doing good in our society Happy Easter to all of you.